Let's get into some media news with the Australian's media writer, Sophie Osworth. Good to talk to you, Sophie. There's plenty happening. There certainly is, Chris. It's a big week down here with the election, for sure. Oh, yeah. We'll try and get to that if we've got time. But look, The Project, a funny show on Channel 10, really. is like teenage-level current affairs, but it's always making a bit of news for various reasons. And now the host, Lisa Wilkinson, formerly breakfast TV host at Channel 9, she's had enough of it. I'll show a little bit of what she had to say. The last six months have not been easy. And the relentless targeted toxicity by some sections of the media has taken a toll, not just on me, but on people I love. It's just bizarre. She's the one who's had <laughs> trouble the last six months by doing and saying the wrong thing and creating all sorts of strife that we won't go into for legal reasons. But um, she's trying to blame other media for her errors by the sounds. Well, Lisa Wilkinson, in typical fashion, made it all about her, and here plays the victim. Uh, Chris, she made headlines back in June for that speech we know that she gave at the Logies that was problematic and resulted in a criminal trial being delayed. So uh, that's why, predominantly why she made a lot of headlines. But for some reason, she took last night's exit and might I add a very abrupt exit from the, from the project to slam the media on the way out. Uh, it was quite remarkable. I mean, she's very good at playing the victim and she did this very well last night. And, of course, uh, in typical fashion, all her fans, you know, say how shocking the media's treated her. But I must say, a lot of it uh, has been caused by her own doing. Yeah, I've got to say, it's all sort of topsy-turvy uh, world because there's a lot of toxic stuff on social media against people from all political backgrounds. But try the abuse held at right of centre or News Corp women by the sort of people who love to uh, uh, like the project or the people like her old mate uh, Mike Carlton, whatever. That's where so much toxicity comes from. And now she's saying she's the victim of it. I want to talk about another story from Channel 9 last night. This is about a candidate in the Victorian election, uh, Renee Heath. And uh, there's a story there related to her religious beliefs and her families, and it's ended up now in Matthew Guy, the opposition leader, saying that uh, when she gets elected, he's not going to take her vote. Here's uh, a little bit of the 60 Minutes report last night. But Guy announced Renee Heath won't be allowed to sit in the Liberal Party room. It's a small nod to common sense, but you really have to wonder why it takes exposure on 60 Minutes for the Liberal Party to take action. So is this all justified or has she been done over? Oh, look, Chris, I was blown away with those comments at the end of this report. Uh, that report did not have comments from Renee Heath. Uh, it was a remarkable story, really, because it was, in effect, a lot of it was guilt by association with her father's links to this controversial church. Uh, I think Matthew Guy jumped too quickly on this. He said uh, she wouldn't be part of the party uh, if he wins, if she wins her seat, uh, it was just remarkable. I mean, really, the way the Liberals handled this was ridiculous. Uh, I think it's annoyed a lot of Victorian voters. But the way that Channel 9 said at the end, you know, thank goodness, a nod for common sense. I mean, really, I was blown away by those comments at the end by Tara Brown. But this is so typical of the modern digital age with social media and the like, because they're worried about a media pile-on about a candidate. It'll distract them in the campaign, so the Liberals ditch her before anybody's really examined the issues carefully. It is a worry. I know the ABC staff have just rejected a pay rise. They want more. We'll perhaps talk about that next week, Sophie. I better move on. Sophie Osworth there. Thanks, you can read Chris. her stuff in the Oz.